My name is Brian Chase. I'm the senior trial attorney and senior partner here at Biznar Chase in Newport Beach, California. We specialize in all kinds of auto defect cases, all kinds of catastrophic personal injury cases, and we do mass torts and consumer class actions as well. I was raised in my younger years in Southgate. It wasn't the most nice neighborhood. Um, we had a relatively modest upbringing. You know, we weren't starving, but we were not rich by any means. And I think growing up in that humble environment and then seeing corporations take advantage of my neighbors and my friends, and as I got older, my contemporaries, I think that's what inspired me to want to take them on. Back in the probably late 70s, when the Ford Pinto verdict came out, it was kind of big news, and I just remember thinking, that's pretty interesting stuff. Ford could have fixed the problem for three or four bucks, six bucks, maybe a gas tank. They actually did an analysis on how many people are going to be burned or killed and how much will the litigation cost to settle those cases. When they found out that was cheaper than fixing the cars, they decided to keep the cars on the road and have those people injured, burned, and killed. So when I saw that, not knowing it was typical, but it really inspired me. If that's going on, I want to right that wrong. So when I got out of high school, I was doing a lot of surfing. Um, I used to surf in pro-am contests. And then finally, come the early middle 80s, I decided, you know, it's time to grow up. And you know, what are you going to do with your life? And then I reflected back on my earlier thoughts about the Fort Pinto case and decided I'm going to apply for law school. Went to Pepperdine. I wasn't the smartest guy in law school. I saw people that would study one hour to get the same grade or a better grade than I got studying two days. So I know people were smarter than me in school, but I knew a lot of folks weren't as determined and as driven and as motivated. I met John Bisnar when I was in college through a friend, and so I already had that connection with John. The law firm back in those days was doing auto soft tissue cases. John said, I'll run the business, you try cases. About six, seven weeks after passing the bar, I was in my first five-day jury trial. In that trial, I was convinced the night before closing argument I was going to get defensed. And so I went home that night, I lost, I lost, I lost, I'm going to lose this trial. And I said that for hours. And then had dinner, and at around 8, 9 o'clock at night, I said, hey Chase, quit talking about how you're going to lose this case and figure out how to win it. And I stayed up all night, prepared my closing argument, went straight to court, dead tired, gave a closing argument, and won that case. And I felt like it was a miracle because I just knew I was going to lose, but I changed my mindset on that. If you want to be a plaintiff's trial lawyer, you have to try cases. And a lot of law firms don't want to try cases, so find out who those folks are and tell them you'll do their last minute trials because that's how you build your reputation. Now, how do you meet those people? I would go to trial lawyer events and meet people that were trying cases and maybe had cases that they didn't want to try, and I'd say, I do last minute trials, I'll try that case. I would get files handed to me on Friday, I'd go try them on Monday. So you started getting a reputation of being a trial lawyer, and you just start growing your practice like that, you know, slowly but surely. To this day, I will go to programs, whether it's COC, CALA, OCTLA. I go to court, and I watch trial lawyers. Young ones, old ones, good ones, bad ones, people that I want to try to learn something from, I go to court still, you know, several times a year to watch people pick a jury, how they do an opening statement, how they cross-examine a witness. It's a constant learning curve and learning growth. I am constantly reading trial testimony. I'll get transcripts from trials, opening statements, closing arguments, direct exams, cross-exams, because then you know you're seeing exactly what was done. In between college, I took a couple years off to be an actor, and I have found that that has helped me tremendously um, as a lawyer. And it's not because we're acting, but it makes you appreciate drama and the theater. In a movie, they've got to hook you in the first three minutes. Trials are that way. Your first witness, you better hook that jury and let them know why you're there. Somewhere in the middle, you want to do the same thing, and you want to finish strong. It's theater, and it's drama, and you got a story to tell. When a case comes into your office, don't just look at the obvious thing and go, well, that was a rear-end accident. The person that rear-ended him was at fault. So I see it happening all the time. Lawyers missing the case. Maybe it's a road design case. Maybe it's a lighting issue. There could be a lot of issues involved in cases. And so we really have to train ourselves to think outside the box and not just focus on the, the kind of quote-unquote easy case where if someone runs a red light and hits you, well, it's their fault. 
if they don't have enough insurance to cover the case, you need to really think about all the potential defendants that could be out there that could be responsible for this. One mistake I see a lot of lawyers make, and I know I make it, and I made it in a trial I had last year. I do a lot of seatback cases. I, I feel like I can do those in my sleep. So I took the expert deposition on their seat expert, knowing what I needed to know. And there was sort of a, an innocuous thing he was discussing in his deposition, and I didn't give it a whole lot of attention. Well, by the time I got to trial, I realized, oh wow, did I miss that? Now, we stayed up several nights with the experts, worked our way through it, but it taught me uh, a lesson just because you've been doing this 25 years, don't think you can take a shortcut. Never assume you know it all. Always keep grinding and always keep pushing. There are no shortcuts in trials. It's a really nice fraternity um, or sorority of trial lawyers. And we all stand on each other's shoulders to make ourselves better because we know together we're really strong. I strongly encourage people to get involved in Consumer Attorneys of California. I can tell you as a past president, I see what they do to protect our practices, to protect consumer rights, and I just can't emphasize enough uh, to get involved in that, you know, give back. You know, more, the more you give back, the more you get in return, although that's not a reason to do it, but it's just a truism of the, the way the world works. When I went to law school, I had the specific intention to be a personal injury attorney, and they had us write on our law school applications, why do you want to be a lawyer? And it was as true then as it is today now, 25, almost 25 years later. You know, the first thing was I wanted my life's work to have a positive, substantive impact on other people's lives. When I can get a good verdict or a good settlement for a client and pay for their medical bills and financial needs and make them whole or as whole as I can, that is wonderful. But so many times it could even go further because it might be a change made into a product. And now I'm indirectly maybe saving one life, maybe a hundred lives, maybe a thousand lives. I don't know, but I know that's floating around out there and making the world safer for folks. It is such a great profession and there's just so much fun in it. You're going up against big companies and smart lawyers and it, you know, it's, it's fun to beat them. If anybody said it's not fun to beat them, they're lying. <laughs>